This is Algebra 2, Chapter 3, Section 4, in which we will be studying systems of equations in three variables. We've already dealt with systems of equations in two variables, and we had techniques to solve those, graphing methods, uh, substitution method, and elimination method. The ideas involved in solving two equation, two variable systems will work with larger systems. And we're particularly interested in systems of three equations with three variables. We could do it graphically, but now you're graphing in three dimensions, and that's a little bit harder to do. You could do it by substitution, but it gets a little hairy trying to substitute in and out of so many different equations. Turns out that the elimination method tends to be the best one. And that's a good thing, because that's the one most people like the best anyway. So we're going to focus on using the elimination method for our 3x3 three three systems. So we're going to have a system of equations here. We have three equations, and you'll notice I've labeled them E1, E2, and E3. Equation 1, equation 2, equation 3. I do this so that I can keep track of what I have done in a problem. Okay. If I make a mistake somewhere, it's easier to find if I can follow back through the arithmetic again instead of having to guess at what did I do here, what did I do there. If you ask me along the way in class, did I, where did I go wrong? What did I do wrong? If you don't have a labeling system that I can follow, it's going to be really hard to find. It's probably going to be easier to say just start over and do it again. So having a system that's followable is really a good idea for you. So I use E1, E2, and E3 so that I can talk about these equations. Now the idea is we want to eliminate a variable. So I'm going to scan the equations and look for a variable that will be easy to work on. And I look here and I see Y has a 1 on it doesn't have anything typed, so we, is, we can assume it's a 1. 1 I can work with easily. I can make 1 into anything. So I'm going to pick on y. If I multiply this row by 2, then I'll have a positive 2y to add together with this, so it'll cancel out. And that's what I want to do. So I'm going to bring equation 1 down as is. And I'm going to multiply equation 2 by 2 for all the terms. Make sure you remember to get this other side when you multiply by the 2. That's a very common mistake. People forget to distribute it all the way across. Now what happens if I combine these together? I get negative 5x minus 6z equals negative 37. I'm going to call that e4 so that I can talk about it again in a few minutes. Notice I showed what I did so that I was able to follow it. Now I've gotten rid of y once. I need to do it again. I need another equation that's just x and z, so I need to get rid of y another way. I can't use these two together again. I can use these two. I can use e2 and e3. What should I multiply e2 by? be able to make it cancel out. Well, if I multiply it by 3, then I'll have a positive 3y to go with the negative 3y. So e3 I'm going to bring down as is. e2 I'm going to multiply by 3 on each term. Again, remembering to get the right side. Now when I collect that together, I get negative 7x minus 12z equals negative 77, which I'm going to call e5. I'm out of space on this screen, so I'm going to go to the next screen. You've still got this in front of you on your note sheet, so you'll still be able to refer back to it. But I'm going to bring the two equations together, e4 and e5. Now I'm down to 2 by 2, and I know how to attack that. I want to do some elimination again. Well, I could pick on x and multiply by a 7 on one of these and a 5 on the other. 
but my numbers will be easier if I just multiply this one by a negative 2. Y negative, so that I get a positive 12z to go with the negative 12z. So let's do negative 2 times e4 and add that to e5. Well, if I multiply negative 2 times e4, I get positive 10x plus 12z equals 74. e5 I just bring down as it is. The z's are going to cancel out. 3x equals negative 3, so x is negative 1. Now I can take this and plug it into either one of these two equations. I picked the top one, no special reason, just because I did. So plug that in. It'll give us 5, move the 5 over, and it gives us negative 42, divided by negative 6, turns out z is 7. Now I can take x and z and plug it back into one of the original three equations. I've got two of the three variables, so I'm just going to pick one of the equations to plug it into. So 3 times negative 1 minus 2y plus 4 times 7 equals 35. Time we do a little cleanup work. 4 times 7 is 28. Subtract it over and you have 7. 3 times negative 1 is negative 3. Add that over, you get 10. Divide by the negative 2, you find out y is negative 5. And just like we did with the two variable ones, we would write our solution as a point. We'll do that with the three variable also. x, then y, then z. This is called an ordered triple instead of an ordered pair. So make sure you give your answer in that form at the end. I'm going to let you pause here, take a few minutes, see if you can drive your way through this system, and then come back and we will talk through it. Make sure you got it. Okay. This time when I scan my equations, I find z to be the most likely culprit because I'll be able to cancel it out the easiest. So I'm going to take E1, and then I'm going to take negative 5 times E3 to make a positive 5Z. Collect my X's, collect my Y's, the Z's canceled out. Now I have an equation for E4. I'm going to do a similar thing with E2 and E3. I'm going to multiply E3 times 2. Okay. distributed the 2 across and collect up negative 13x plus 11y z's are out equals negative 61 as before I've run out of room on the page so I brought the two equations with me e4 and e5 well if I look at e4 and e5 they're ready right now just to add together so e4 plus e5 the 11y's cancel out. 14x equals 42, so x is 3. Well, now I can plug x is 3 into either one of these. I picked e4. 27 times 3 is 81. Subtract the 81 over, you get 22. Divided by negative 11 is negative 2. Now I have x and y. I can plug those in to one of the original equations. 2 times 3 is 6, 4 times negative 2 is negative 8, so together this is negative 2. Add 2 over, we get 20. Divide by negative 5 gives us negative 4, so our final solution is 3, negative 2, negative 4. Okay. Remember our plan. We're going to write out what we're doing so that we can follow through our steps. There's lots of places to make little mistakes, forgetting to multiply this number by a 2, or misadding, or miss subtracting, or something like that. There's lots of little places to mess up, so you're really going to have to focus on what you're doing when you're doing these problems. But you can get through this. You just have to stick with it. Okay. If you had questions along the way, hopefully, as always, you jot those down. 
bring them in with you, and we will see you in class.